Hey guys, it's Lou here from DataBear.com. Welcome back to the year 2019. We have many, many exciting videos coming your way. So stick with us and we will show you all the tricks of Power BI. This first one we're going to be doing is uh, DAX variables. If you've never seen or heard of DAX variables, this will change your life in more than one way. What is DAX variables used for? Well, I've seen um, I've seen guys use DAX for for debugging DAX uh, using the variables. So if you have a very long piece of DAX code and uh, you get an error and you're not sure what's going on, in fact, Patrick and uh, Marco has a video on that. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, where they go about teaching or showing how uh, to debug your DAX. What we will be doing today is um, the uses for, for DAX variables is to make complex DAX just a little bit easier to read and uh, possibly even enhance performance. So let's get started. Let's jump right in. So to start with our DAX variables, I just want to create two initial uh, measures. Um, I've got a self measure container here, which is really just a table. Uh, just to show you a table with the number one inside. And I'm going to right click and say new measure. And this one we're going to call total sales. And I'm going to calculate the sum from the sales table and the value I'm looking for is called total sales. Let's close the bracket and let's format this to British pound. Great. So we have a total sales measure. Um, by the way, to get this to show as a measure container we can just hide um, that number one value in the report if we collapse the fields pane and reopen it you'll see now the cells measure that table shows as a measure container um, so when you're in the report view You will see you'll have cells right on top cells measures with your measures underneath uh, cool so let's get started with the second measure this one I'm going to call sales previous year and let's do calculate I'm going to use the sales measure I've just created and I want to do date add of calendar date minus one year. Let's again format this to British pound. Fantastic. So we've got two measures, one for total sales and one for sales previous year. So to show you guys how a DAX variables work, I'm going to use a unique approach here. So I'm going to do a movement of the total cells, but I'm going to use a, the unichar DAX function. For those of you who don't know what unichar is, I'll put a link in the description uh, to where you can find various unichars that you can use, in fact, for uh, within, within Power BI. So let's get started. I'm going to write our first DAX variable. I'm going to call it movement. Movement of the total cells. So the first variable I want to write, um, to start with variables, you write VAR. Then you name the variable. 
I'm going to cool this down. Then I'm going to write Unichar with a code. Now this, these codes you can find on the internet. Um, again, I'll provide the link in the description below. And each of these numbers represents a particular picture uh, or, or character. So uh, this var down character shows a down pointing arrow. Now we do var up. And we do unichar. And this code is for an upward pointing arrow and it's to a var side and this one is a 211 then we write return so the reason we write return here is because we want it to return those characters based on the following if statement we're going to write. So we are going to say return var up, down or side if. Right, so we're going to say total sales is greater than total, uh, sorry, sales the previous year. And if it is, return up. So if I just go back, if I write up and I go down you'll see here's our variable it is represented in the the list by an XY so we can just write up then for the next if statement we're gonna go and say total sales and here we're gonna say smaller than the cells of the previous year then down and if both of those statements are false um, which means they would have to be equal to each other then let's just call the side all right fantastic so um, I want to quickly mention that Marco Russo has uh, they have this cool little tool you can use and it is at https daxformatter.com so we can take this code of ours and we could paste it in there and say format it then rearranges the dax uh, formula and just lines it up nicely so if we put it copy and paste it over here that looks much better great so let's create our first table i'm going to do um date and let's add our previous cells with total cells i'm going to change this to a matrix visual and let's drill down Let's remove quarter for now. Okay, so here we've got previous year sales and current year sales by year and month. So if we drag our movement measure we've just created over, you will see that it shows us whether the sales went up or down. Let's just in increase the the text size great so you can see here that from 2014 February uh, sales went up in, in the current year um, here's one that went down so it shows a downward arrow so if we wanted to enhance this a little bit further we could also write a um, a measure that changes the color of our unichar character so if it shows up we could make it green if it shows down red um, and so forth so let's create another measure and this measure we are going to call movement and let's just put color 
create and this is going to be an if statement as well so we're going to say if the total sales is greater than the sales for the previous year then so, and here you can do one of two things you can either write green just the word green or you can use the color hex code um so you know that there's a color or a code for each color um, and here we're just going to put hash uh, 00B050, right? So that's our green. And let's do another if statement. If the total sales is less than the sales for the previous year. And let's, instead of writing the code, let's say red. And then if that is false then return let's do b3 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 great so we've got to measure that uh, with an if statement that changes or gives a color based on a particular scenario so in order to make the the varchar characters change color we'll have to apply some conditional formatting. So under movement, total sales, click the, the down arrow, go to conditional formatting and choose font color. Great. Under format by, we are going to choose the field value. And then on the drop down list, we can just do a search. We know our formula is called movement color. So you select the formula that you want to use to, to apply the color rule and then click OK. Cool. So as you can see, everywhere where there's an upward arrow, it's green. Everywhere where there's a downward arrow, there's red. And the we don't have any cells that equals from one year to the other. But that would have also indicated the, the color change. So that's one fantastic way in, in which you can use tax variables. Um, I want to do one more. I want to do one more where um, I just show you how the tax variables work. So let's do one more measure, uh, a nice tax variable. And this one I am going to call, uh, let's call it growth percentage what was the growth percentage from this year versus last year okay um so for our first variable let's just go one down row down the first variable i'm going to do the current sales let's call it current sales and that is the sum of the sales quantity right and then we are going to do another variable, which is going to be the sales last year. Sorry, so I said sales, but this is actually the current sales quantity, right? And sales quantity last year. And here we do a calculate of the sum of the sales table, the quantity column okay for the same period last year the calendar date all right then we return the values and we do an if statement so yeah we're going to do if and so we're going to use our variable so the current the current sales quantity is not equal to zero and the sales quantity last year is not equal to zero then divide divide the current sales quantity minus the sales quantity of quantity of last year um, and divide that by the sales for quantity for last year right so it first checks if the current sales quantity and sales quantity last year is not zero. 
because if, if either one of those two is zero, we cannot divide the one by the other. It will give us um, an error. Um, but then divide, so we take the current year sales quantity, we subtract the previous year's quantity, so, so to give us a difference, and then divide that by the, the sales quantity of last year, to so give us the percentage growth from last year to this year. So this looks a bit messy, let's format it in, um, in our DAX formatter. Uh, let's just do new. Format. Awesome. So that you can see this is a really nice tool. Um, it perfectly lays it out uh, so that you can read it a lot better. And then, of course, because this returns a percentage, we format this to a percentage and then put that on a canvas. Fantastic. So here you can see the percentage growth from the previous year. Um, and the current year. So I think that's it for DAX variables. As you can see, you can break down your DAX code rather into variables in, in a logical pattern or structure, and it makes it much easier to read. It makes it much easier to understand. And again, it makes it much easier to, uh, to troubleshoot if you do run into errors with your code. And that's it for this week. I hope you had a wonderful time and uh, thank you for coming. There'll be a lot more coming your way. And uh, all the best for 2019. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Did you like this video? Then hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel. And remember to click the bell icon to be reminded of any new videos. Visit databear.com to find out more about how we can turn your reporting dreams into a reality. Your data, our story.